Hi and welcome, so happy you're here. Today I'm gonna to be talking about what to do if your husband or wife has one foot in and one foot out. Of course, this can apply to girlfriend and boyfriend, any committed close relationship. So it's very difficult, it's very challenging if your partner is blowing hot and cold, if they're one minute nice to you, one minute awkward towards you. If they do loving things and then say they're not sure about you or the relationship. If sometimes they're happy and other times they feel that there's no hope for the future and your future relationship. So what can you do? The first thing is to accept. And I'm going to be talking in this video about the four A's, okay, to help you, four A's. Feel free to make notes if it helps. So the first A is accept. Accept where you are. Accept that's where they are. Accept the situation. What we resist persists. If we fight their attitude, if we fight their opinion, if we fight saying, no, the relationship's great, no, you're, you're thinking wrong, you're feeling wrong. If we don't accept, we're gonna hit resistance with them. So first of all, we just accept. That's the way it is at the moment. Doesn't mean it's permanent, doesn't mean we need to give up, doesn't mean that we should also have one foot out as well. It's just accepting. This is what the reality is. And also realize that they probably are stuck. They're confused, they're lost maybe. And they don't want to be one foot in and one foot out. It's a horrible place to be. In fact, that's what I help many individuals get out of whether they come to me for individual breakthrough sessions to work out what to do and gain that clarity and then move forward in their life or with couples to see what are the steps to make their relationship work and are they willing to do them. So accepting gives you peace. Acceptance is key. The second A is address their needs. Understand their needs and address them. Actions speak louder than words. Many people say that, although words are also important. So accept and address. Understand what do they need from you? What makes them happy? What do they love in a relationship? What did they love about you at the beginning? What do they like? What do they enjoy? Help them reach their individual goals and needs. Address their relationship goals and needs. So the second A is address. And also address your needs. It's important not to neglect yourself in this process. The third A is appreciating everything. When we appreciate, we multiply. When we appreciate our life, our relationship, our partner, ourselves, everything, we attract more good to us. It elevates our state. We're going to be much more in a better position to help those that we love around us. And it gets us out of that victimhood. It gets us out of feeling like, oh, poor me, and life's a struggle, and, you know, seeing, seeing the blue. And it, and it can just lift our mood. So what can you appreciate in your life? What can you appreciate in yourself? What can you appreciate in your body? What can you appreciate in your partner. So appreciation really is amazing to help elevate you. And we can all find some things to appreciate even in our darkest moments. And the fourth A is attention. Give your attention, your energy, your focus to what you can control. You cannot control what your husband, wife, girlfriend, boyfriend thinks. You cannot control what actions they take. You can control your mood. You can control how you look after yourself. Do you sleep well, exercise, feed yourself good food, take care of your needs, rest? Can you Pay attention to their needs. Can you pay attention to 
everything within your control. You can control your attitude, you can control your actions, you can choose what things mean to you. You can think of the worst case scenario, or you can think of the best case scenario. So what are you paying attention to? Are you paying attention and focus and energy on the things that you cannot control? That's going to drown you, that's going to drain you, and you've got to snap yourself out of that. Sometimes when I work with people, I say, right, write me a list of all the things that are on your mind. Put a timer on your phone for 10 minutes and just write it all down. And then I have them circle what is in your control and what is not in their control. For example, we can't control the COVID. We can't control the economic situation in the world. We cannot control certain things. And then what can you control? I can control what I put in my body. I can control what I choose to think about. I can control what actions I take today. I can choose whether to accept or resist, for example. And when you focus your energy and intention on what you can control, you're going to feel so much more empowered. I hope you enjoyed this video. Stay tuned for more. Take care. Bye.